great. So this is your graduate program information session for the Kirkhoff College of Nursing. And essentially, um, just so you can provide a little bit of context of where Grand Valley State is, we are located obviously in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and there's three major health systems. And KCON, Kirkhoff College of Nursing, is located on the medical mile. And so I'll turn it over to, to Linda now um, sure. because we will be discussing the MSN program, the DNP, and then the certificates as well. So go for it, Linda. Yeah. Okay. So our Master of Science in Nursing, with which Brianna said you said that indicated that you were interested in, this is a really a uh, really versatile degree, and I think that you'll find that it it can meet a lot of your interests and needs. Um, it obviously builds on the BSN. If you consider the BSN as being the generalist degree in nursing, this master's degree builds everything on your BSN education. So we have advanced pathophysiology, advanced pharmacology, advanced physical assessment. Those are all courses that you took at Madonna when you were in your uh, BSN program. With this, this, um, this degree focuses, and I think that it would work really nicely with your um, lead preceptor in that it focuses on bringing evidence to, evidence-based care to the point of care. So bringing evidence from the literature to the point of care in a very um, systematic way. So we teach everything that you would need to know about bringing evidence um, to make real and lasting change at the point of care, not only to benefit the patient, but also to benefit the organization. So, you know, when we, when we think about bringing care um, transition to patients, we have to always be real uh, cognizant too of what's going on with the organization. Is this going to cost the organization money? Is it going to be neutral or are we going to have a, a net benefit? in terms of finance. So we talk about that heavily in this. It also focuses on quality and safety for patients and the family and the organization. So go to the next slide here, Rachel. So what can you do with this degree? We have, um, this degree will prepare you to become certified as a clinical nurse leader, which is a point of care, um, uh, what do I say, quality and safety knowledge translation expert who can look out there and say, wow, what, what do the experts say uh, about this clinical problem in the field? And what can I do about it at, in my institution, in my setting? So that's kind of what the clinical nurse leader does. That's boiling it down, way down to a, a nutshell, but also quality and safety and uh, case management and definitely prepares you to teach in the way that um, with the advanced patho um, farm and assessment, we prepare you to take your skills to the next level so that you can bring up those who you're precepting or teaching to do the same. So those are just some of the ideas of what you can do with a master's. So on the next slide, we're going to look at um, more particulars about our program. Our programs, all of our programs in the graduate school are offered in a hybrid format. It combines on-site and online classes. So um, they meet approximately once a month. During COVID time, we've uh, obviously gone all online. Um, about a year ago now, we had four days to convert the entire university to an all online format, which was really quite an amazing um, feat, but we did it. Um, so all in the classes that you're supposed to meet per se are be meeting online. This fall, we're looking, uh, Grand Valley is, is preparing to go back to our pre-COVID um, structure, which was where the students would come on campus. Now, one thing that, that we really didn't uh, talk too much about when we're talking about Grand Valley, but it's an exciting thing for us, is that Grand Valley used to have two campuses, one out in Allendale, the main campus, one downtown, we called it the Pew Campus. Um, that's the name of the sponsor for that um, campus. Anyway, it's the Pew Campus. And then we're up the hill on the medical mile, and we were always considered part of the Pew Campus. But we are so growing and so exploding up here on the hill that we have finally earned our own designation of being the health campus. So the classes are, are taught on the health campus and we are kitty corner from Spectrum. We are just a short distance away from Mercy Health St. Mary's, uh, two of the large medical centers that are in Grand Rapids. Metro is the other one, Metro Health, Michigan Health. And um, that one's a bit of ways, but we are embedded where a lot of uh, medical provider medical services are being provided. So that's kind of cool. So we meet on that campus, on the health campus when classes meet. Application for this program, February 1st is the application deadline. Um, we've extended that this year until May 15th because we know that um, 
students, this has been such a weird time, right? COVID has just upended everybody and including people who are thinking about coming to graduate school. Um, we've been upended, you've been upended, especially if you're doing clinical work and it sounds like both of you are, um, you know the pressure you've been under. So in consideration of that, we've, we've extended that out to May 15th. So um, don't feel like you've missed any timelines or that it's too late to apply if you're interested because it's really not. The master's program has 37 credits completed over five semesters and 405 clinical hours are associated with this degree. So on the next slide, we'll take a look at what, whoop, not quite yet. Okay. Um, the next thing that we kind of want to talk about, but first of all, Brianna, did you have any other questions about our master's program? I think you answered all of them for now. Thank you. Okay. Um, like I said, it's, it's 37 credits. It's over five semesters. Um, it's a dynamic program. In the beginning, you are in classes with the um, the, doc, the DMP students, you take farm with them, you take patho with them, you take theory, you take some leadership. So you're you're in with the DNP students. Then in the in your third semester, we start splitting you out and bringing you into um, the DNP specific class. Or, sorry, the MSN specific classes. I've been an adjunct faculty in that program, and I've really enjoyed working with our master's students and watching the growth that takes place um, when these students go into the clinical. We had uh, our cohort, last cohort of master's students graduated in December. It was a small cohort, but they did graduate. They did finish, uh, despite the challenges that COVID brought. And it was um, interesting how we all had to work together to make their projects work, even though we had limited access to the clinical sites, especially in the beginning when um, my students were both at, uh, two of them were at Mercy Health St. Mary's, and uh, they were excluded from a clinical experience for quite a bit. So they were doing more online, interacting with their preceptors there and, and all that, but they were success and they, successful and they graduated on time. So I was really excited about that, okay? We'll get into the application and what it all, all entails a little bit later. The, the next thing I wanna talk about briefly is our doctoral degrees. And to understand what our DNP is, we need to understand, first of all, what a PhD is. I think because when we talk about what are, what are the terminal degrees in nursing, we have two routes you can take. The PhD, which delves in original research to address health problems. They do uh, scientific methodology. They are considered nurse scientists to um, delve into, discover, and um, quantify new interventions, new solutions, um, original research, right, to address problems. So that's what the philosophy doctorate is. When you look at a practice doctorate, and that's what the DNP is, it's application of the best research of evidence. It is knowledge translation and implementation science to a little bit smaller degree, much more focused on the micro system. That's where the, the, our master's students work. If you consider the organization broadly, like if we look at spectrum, spectrum is the, the macro system. Your division, which might be, let's say it's orthopedics or um, cardiology, that would be your meso system or like the medium um, view for this large organization. And then you go down to your unit and that would be the micro system. So, they are, our master's students work on the micro system, bringing change at that level, where the DNPs work either at the meso, which could be like a whole cardiology um, division, or the macro system, where we're going to institute change that goes across the entire universe, or the entire university, yeah, the entire organization, okay? So that's what the practice doctorates do. We look at the best application of the research evidence. Now, let's see, here's where we tie it to what the PhDs do. If I'm looking at a, a practice a problem, and I'm a researcher, philosophy doctorate, right, the PhD, I'm going to just get all excited. I'm going to create a study. I'm going to say, oh my gosh, this is how we're going to intervene. This is how we're going to test. We're going to have our, our um, dependent variable and our independent variable and see if those, those uh, are a cause and effect thing. The practice doctorate says, wow, I have this clinical issue. What have the researchers already told me about the best practice here? What is the best intervention I can bring to the point of care or to my organization or to my division, whichever level I'm on? And I bring that evidence and institute it at the point of care. That was one of the biggest uh, reasons the DMP was first created as the PhDs were lamenting that what they knew as best practice today was not filtering down to the point of care for about 15 years, which is just really stupid. 
but that's what it was. So here I am in 2021, and I can say maybe by 2036. Doesn't that sound, we should have flying cars then. 2036, for the love of God. 2036 is when maybe somebody will be doing what I know is right today at the point of care because it takes that long for that knowledge to filter down. Okay, so on the next slide, we, we kind of look at, this is just a quick summary. What is a DNP? What is a PhD? And we put them side by side so you can understand the difference. Okay. Um, we look at program objectives, career focus, uh, course focus, clinical requirements, um, research requirements, scholarly project, and types of positions. PhDs can, can obviously go into academe. They can be nurse scientists for health organizations, industry, the government, lots of different um, ways that they can go. DNPs are, can be in advanced practice. They can be academic faculty. They can be in leadership, leadership positions in healthcare industry, private industry, or um, in policy. Okay. So what can you do with those degrees? Well, as a PhD, we just, we just summarized. Clinical researcher, research in private government and industry, be a professor. Uh, the DNP, advanced practice, nurse midwife, CRNA, clinical nurse specialist, professor, leadership positions. There's many things that you can do um, with the DNP also. But I just want to set a foundation for those are the differences when we talk about terminal degrees in nursing. One is not necessarily better than the other. They just are doctoral degrees that have different focus. Okay. So on the next slide, we offer primary care adult adolescent, I'm sorry, adult child adolescent, primary care adult older adult, and health systems leadership. These um, programs take 75 to 77 credits. 1,035 hours to complete for students who are entering with a BSN. A customized program plan is offered for students enrolling with an MSN if you want to change your format, because we also have a post-MSN health systems leadership degree. So someone like you, Brianna, if you said, you know, DNP sounds like a lot to bite off right now. Not sure I want to do that. I want to get a master's degree um, to help me move my career in the right direction. But I want, to, I want to take that step first. If you decided a few years after you earned your MSN that, wow, the DNP sounds, sounds like it's, it's what I need next, we also have the uh, post-MSN DNP track, which can really um, can be a stepping stone to ultimately get you where your, your career can be. You're a young practitioner, so that would be a, a reasonable thing to do. OK? Um, similar, similarly. It's a hybrid format, just like the uh, master's program. The application timeline is the same. What's important to know for both of our graduate programs, the MSN and the DNP, and even um, Lauren, the post uh, MSN um, psych mental health, we have a fall start for that. We have a fall cohort and we start all of our students in the fall semester, okay? Okay. Yeah, next slide there. Okay, here's where we talk about our graduate certificates. We do have the Interprofessional Healthcare Informatics, which is very specific. It's nine credits, and it is very laser focused on informatics. You take um, a course in uh, one of them is, is at, in fact taught called Healthcare Informatics. There's also a telehealth course, and then there's some electives that you can choose to make up your last class. Palliative and hospice care is. Um, 12 credits, you take nine credits of core and one elective. And then the psych mental health, it sounds like Lauren, that's what you are most interested in. So we can laser focus on that. That one is a very compact course. It has 19 credits and 525 clinical hours involved in that program. But like I said, we can pull up that course um, in a minute here. So on the next slide, why study at Grand Valley? Well, in the College of Nursing at the graduate level, we are focused on the adult learner. Actually, all of Grand Valley is focused on the adult learner. We in uh, the nursing college take it very seriously that we understand our students are working. We understand that our students have, have careers that they're trying to either change a direction or augment their current career with uh, specialized education. We have individualized assistance. Um, we work with, with our financial aid office closely to talk about scholarships and the application. 
You will also get a dedicated advisor. When you are accepted to the College of Nursing, you are assigned an advisor who will walk with you through your educational journey. Um, we understand the work-life balance. We understand school balance. We understand people have families. So as advisors, we work closely with our students to make sure that you are have the right resources and have everything that you need to be successful. Individualized degree plans are written out. We have for all, well, not for the masters, but for our DNP programs, we also have uh, both full and part-time. The master's program is so um, compact that it would be difficult to make it into a, a part-time plan. And I, we can pull that one up and show you that too, uh, Brianna, as long as we're gonna be looking at program plans. Okay, and what's the next slide here? So the advantage, advisor gu guided, clinicals, this is an important thing, very important. Grand Valley takes clinical assignments very seriously. We want to make sure that your clinical assignment is a quality assignment and that we have um, you in the right place to, to receive the right resources and the right support. So we attempt, make every attempt to put our students in a clinical site that is closer to where they live in your region. We also um, will we find the clinical site for you. We do not expect our students to find clinical sites. We do not. If you came forward and said, wow, I live in this area and I've got this place I would love to do some of my um, clinical work at, then you bring that name forward, you bring that contact forward. And our, we have a full-time placement coordinator. That's all this nurse does is place students at all, excuse me, at all levels from the baccalaureate through the master's, we actually have a second degree, we have an r and BSN, we have our master's and our doctoral tracks. All our clinical placement coordinator does is make sure students are appropriately placed. So this is something that we take seriously and we pride ourselves on the fact that we will find your clinical placement. We do not expect you to do that, okay? It's an important thing to know. Um, and then we talk about our, our Certificates, we have three now. We've got others uh, that we're considering. We have um, other even smaller chunks that you can break off that would be like a badge, which would be maybe a one or two course um, credential. So we're trying to meet the needs of working nurses who are in the work site. They are in uh, practice. And what is it that you need to augment your skills and to bring yourself to the next level? Some of, those are some of the advantages. Our faculty are at Grand Valley because they love to teach. Grand Valley across the board, our faculty are at Grand Valley because their primary expectation is teaching. Yes, research goes on and we have a lot of uh, faculty involved in research, but at some of the larger Research One universities, um, they have faculty who are heavily involved in research, sometimes to um, the detriment of teaching. Grand Valley is a school that is committed to the education of our students and our faculty are here because they love to teach. So we have very supportive faculty. In graduate school, what I found is, um, because I'm a product of our own DNP, I did my health systems leadership at Grand Valley. Our faculty are very involved with our students and communication is key. So you might think, wow, I, I've got this, um, got a little family problem popping up here. I'm gonna need a little leeway on my next assignment contact your faculty because they will be more than willing to work with you. I found our faculty to be very approachable and very open if you are relaying what's going on, yeah, if you communicate with them. Okay, our next slide. If you were happen to be a Grand Valley um, graduate, which I don't think either of you identified as, we have a $1,000 support. It's called the Laker, Laker Lifetime Learning Account. If either of you were to, like Laura, Brianna, if you get your master's degree and then come back for uh, doc, your DNP at Grand Valley, you would be, um, you would be eligible for this award. It's a total of a thousand dollars, and um, it's there for you to use to increase your skills in, in anything. It does not have to even be a whole degree. You might say, I would really like to take, a, I don't know, developmental health class through the psych department. You could use that money towards that. So it gives you an additional thousand dollars once you are a graduate of Grand Valley. Similarly, Lauren, if you were to um, come into our postmasters and you earn that postmasters certificate, you would be an alum of Grand Valley. You would also be eligible for that thousand dollar lifetime support. 
We also have a career center that offers all of our graduates career support, and we have an extensive alumni network that are very loyal, loyal to Grand Valley and are very active. And so um, you would also be um, able to network with our, our other alumni through various events, kind of fun stuff. Okay, so how are we gonna pay for all of this? Oh gosh, how are we gonna pay for all of this? Grand Valley has some scholarships that are endowed through the College of Nursing. And these are scholarships that I encourage all of our students to look at, especially our graduate students. And I'll be honest with you, financial aid at the graduate level is less available than it was at the undergrad level. At the undergrad level, that just there's just a lot more out there. In the graduate world, um, it is a little bit narrower scope. So the scholarships that we have endowed, all of our students can um, explore and apply for. Um, graduate assistantships are a great way, uh, awesome way to finance your education. And just a little bit about GAs. Graduate assistants um, work, a part-time GA would work 10 hours a week in the College of Nursing as either a research assistant or a teaching assistant. And what the GAs have told me is that what they absolutely love is having that deeper relationship with a professor or with a group of professors. And some of our GAs have been second authors or third authors on published research that they've done with their faculty. They've also been involved in national conference presentations of their research with the faculty. So the ability to uh, really add to your profile and your uh, resume um, can be done through the graduate assistantship. But what else does it do? Well, if you're a part-time GA, you would get four credits of tuition paid for in each semester. So, and you'd also get a $2,000 stipend. If you were a full-time GA, you would work 20 hours a week in the College of Nursing. For that, you would get nine credits of tuition waived and a $4,000 stipend. So the graduate assistantships are a really nice way. Um, to me, it's a win-win. You not only get money for putting in 10 or 20 hours a week, but you're also developing relationships with professors and doing work that is that is really important. It gets you more embedded into the College of Nursing. Loans are always available. A lot of our students take loans to um, come to graduate school. Personal funds and employer support. Um, I don't know about where you folks work, Lauren or Brianna, but here in West Michigan, we have um, most of our major our major healthcare organizations um, offer employee support to come to school. It might be a limit of say three thousand dollars for an for a, a calendar year, um, but it's it's a generous offer. And for that, our student students tell us that um, they're required to work maybe six months after their last class or whatever as a, a payback for their employer support. So we help you get creative. We also have uh, a Blackboard site. Blackboard is our classroom management system. I don't know if either of you are familiar with using that. There's other um, other ones out there like Moodle is another one and there, there's other, uh, but Blackboard is what we use. We have a Blackboard site for all graduate students. And when we get information about scholarships or other financial opportunities, we will post that there for all students to consider. So we keep you guys informed. We wanna help you um, pay for your, your interest in coming back to school. Um, so we've extended our application to May 15th. Application sooner rather than later is, uh, is encouraged if you decide that one of our programs might be the best for you. 